But what about today? What about in the last couple hundred years in the West? What is who is the false prophet today? And unfortunately, both Saint Cosmas, unfortunately for for many, many millions and millions of of uh, followers of Christ in the West, unfortunately. It is sad to say, but it is true that St. Cosmas and Elder Athanasios and many, many saints in the Orthodox Church hold that the Pope, that is the representative of heretical Western Christianity, is a false prophet. So not only according to St. Cosmas, but Elder Athanasios says, this is how we see things. Now, people will say, he says, people will say, I'm a fanatic, but that is how we see it as Orthodox. And this might come as a big surprise to a lot of people who are Roman Catholics listening tonight. What is this? What's he talking about? The, there is much ignorance, brothers and sisters, among those in the West, whether they be Orthodox Christians or Roman Catholics or, as I call them, Papal Protestants or Reformed Protestants, much ignorance that the Orthodox saints, the, the, the holy ones, the ascetics, the missionaries, the teachers, the preachers have been doggedly opposed. To papal Protestantism, papalism, and have seen it as a distortion, a gross distortion of the gospel for 1,000 years. Now, this is in our day because of ecumenism, because of compromise of many hierarchs and theologians, this voice, this voice of the saints is not heard. And some might say, well, maybe that's better. We need to be ecumenists. We need to have a you know love and and we need to be a part of this whole spirit of the world. But is that really is that really true? Is that is that going to liberate people from delusion and falsehood? And is it really going to bring true unity? Of course not. We've talked about this. We've talked about it incessantly for years. We have many, many podcasts on it. We know the reality is that ecumenism is a grave, the pan heresy. It will not bring anything like freedom from delusion to our brothers and sisters who are not a part of the church, the one holy Catholic apostolic church. So this so-called, as El, this is, I'm quoting Elder Athanasius here in the in the yellow, the so-called Christianity of the West. Now this is harsh, right? This is harsh. It's hard to hear for those of you who are Roman Catholics. But this is how this great elder, who we've been sitting at the feet of for the last year and a half, who is thousands upon thousands of homilies on Holy Scripture and is a great and towering figure of patristic orthodoxy, he does not mince any words here and he says the so-called christianity of the west has successfully brought forth delusion and heresy namely the adulteration of christianity which serves the purpose of the negation of the salvation of people now you and others you know might be very very sincere followers of christ i don't doubt it he doesn't doubt it we're not talking about individuals we're not even talking about whole groups of people we're not talking about people we're talking about what's professed what's taught and what's understood to be the orthodox christian faith the faith delivered once by our lord and the apostles it's not a critique of people but of the faith that's been professed the heresy that's being taught the spiritual delusion unfortunately that's being observed so this is the reality we have a false prophet in the pope and if people doubted it 40 50 60 150 years ago because there was much more in common with the traditional orthodox christian perspective today this pope right now pope francis is obviously a a not a servant of jesus christ not an apostle not a successor to the apostles even on the most basic gross level even if you have no idea of church history do not understand the heresy of the filioque you don't understand the heresy of uh of the so-called infallibility you you think that no in fact that's the teaching of the church if you have a christian bone in your body you look at what he's doing and what he's saying and what he's teaching with regard to morality with regard to marriage and homosexuality and and and, and many things and he's he's meeting with and abating and aiding uh, globalism and 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 these these woke movements and people. We we're all we're very well knowledge. Everybody just turn on the television, turn on the internet. You see how far he is, even from Roman Catholic standards. How much more from the Orthodox faith? So today he is, I think, obviously to anyone who has eyes to see, he is a false prophet. He is not leading people to the cross and the life in Christ and in the mysteries of the church. So 
we see in our days that the Antichrist is completing this work of false Christianity through the God opposing and anti Christian social systems. By the way, it's not an accident, those were born. Those were born out of the, the ground of false Christianity in the West. It's heretical Christianity that brought about a Nietzsche. He looked and he saw not Christ, but heresy and did not understand who Christ was, never encountered the grace of God and never saw the true face of Christ. And so many who became atheists in the West never came face to face with the power and the peace uh, of, of the gospel and the Lord. And that's why we have this dissolution in the West. Century after century after century, we have a gross dissolution and essentially throwing off of Christianity. And so now we've arrived at this God-opposing anti-Christian system, would have been, of course, communism in the 1980s in Greece when Elder Athanasius was talking. Today we have uh, you know, the uh, Marxist social program across the West, which is obvious to all people now. We see this rising in the universities everywhere. It's the same anti-Christ, atheist, really anti-theistic spirit in the world. That's not an accident. Again, it's, it, it's born out of false Christianity. And so the false prophet is busy at work. The spirit of the false prophet, the actual false prophets in every age, they're busy at work with multifarious heresies, such as heliasm, ecumenism, or whatever else is offered as heresy, all of which work against the Christian spirit. So, so some of you don't know what heliasm is. We're going to be talking about, we've talked about it here. We'll talk about it again many times. This idea, you can see it actually literally in some evangelical Protestants. They believe there will be a thousand year reign of Christ on earth. One of the heresies condemned by the early church. But more broadly, it's any utopian scheme. It's any false uh, uh, preaching of heaven on earth. It's any idea that Christ will reign on earth for a thousand years. He'll come back as a Messiah and not as a judge. All of these distortions and errors, which are very, uh, very much seen today. You have the Jews that are expecting their Messiah. You have the Muslims expecting a return uh, of the of their uh, of Christ or their prophet, uh, a prophet. And then you have the uh, evangelical Protestants expecting a thousand year reign on earth. Uh, there's, of course, gr that literal thousand year reign, but then there's the general utopian schemes, whatever they, there are many, many forms. And that's a, that's a spirit of, of chiliasm. Uh, and so that is very much, we're very much in the age of chiliasm today. Chiliasmos in Greek. And of course, ecumenism, which is, we've talked about many times. So these things we see uh, are the work of the false prophet. I'm still 